Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at custom supports in Slicer Prusa Edition. I've seen all the comments on my other Slicer video and I know that a lot of you really want this tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to do it. <clears throat> but I will say, before we get stuck in, that the whole experience of creating custom support in Slicer Prusa Edition is not great, which is why I left it out of that original video. So in my opinion it could be so much easier than it is currently to add custom supports i really hope there's some development work underway to improve it i know that the original version of slicer has a lot of improvements for this but the prusa edition still doesn't have them so i'm hoping that it comes to the prusa edition pretty soon but i'm honestly considering just transferring all my printer settings over to the original version of Slicer because that's something that's pretty useful to do anyway and if I decide to do that I will make a video about it in case any of you want to also do it. So I'm going to show you how to do it anyway regardless but hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean. It's just a bit fiddly honestly um, but yeah so let's get into Slicer and First thing I want to do is kind of get you thinking there's two, there's two sort of approaches you can take to do this so depending on the model you've got you may want to take either one. So you can either generate supports everywhere and block out the areas that you don't want to add supports to or you can take the opposite approach and not generate supports everywhere but enforce support in the areas that you want to and that might sound a little confusing but I'm going to show you two concrete examples now where you can see exactly what I mean and hopefully you'll be able to sort of determine which approach you're going to take depending on what model you're working with. So what I'm going to do is import a model that I recently created. This is from a recent video that I made and what I did was just create a mod for my Prusa Mark 3 that allowed me to do really cool time lapses. I leave a link to that video here if you want to check it out. I do so, it's pretty awesome. But anyway, as you can see, I modded uh, an extruder part and I created this long arm that comes off it, right? So if we look at it from this angle, you can see that that arm is not in contact with the heat bed. And that means that we're going to need to add supports because you can't print on nothing or you can't print on thin air. It doesn't work. Uh, you're going to have to add supports. And that's what supports are for if you don't know what they're for. Basically, it's to if you've got a character with arms, for example, in a T-pose, the arms wouldn't, they simply wouldn't print without supports because you can't print on nothing. So we're going to take the first approach first, which is to generate supports everywhere. So in the top right, underneath fill density, you can see there's a drop down next to support. And what you'd usually do to do that is just click generate support everywhere. So if we slice that, you can see in the preview tab what it, what it does. So it's created supports in all the areas that it deems necessary. But sometimes it puts them in places that you don't want them to be. And a perfect example of that is here so you can see this part you might recognize it's on top of the extruder on your printer but it's it's generated support inside the hole where the filament is supposed to go through now that isn't very useful and if it printed this way i'd have to drill a hole through it but what we can do is we can say okay we want to generate supports everywhere except that area so what you want to do is in the 3d tab you want to double click your model and it brings up this new window and you might not have seen it before, but it's basically similar to the other one. We've got like a flat plane with our 3D model on it. Now, what we need to do is generate an object. And we can tell, we can tell the software whether that object is going to be a support enforcer or a support blocker. And a support enforcer enforces supports inside of that object. And a support blocker block support inside of that object. So to create an object we need to click load generic 
and you can see we've got another little drop down here and we can generate a box, a slab, a cylinder or a sphere. So we're going to choose box and we're going to give it certain dimensions so we're just going to do 100 by 100 by 100. What that does is generate this little cube and that's about the right size for this hole that we want to cover. So this is the bit that I don't like about this software. So in order to move this now we've got to use these sliders here. So we can slide all the way on the x-axis to the left and it only goes so far because the slide is limited out. But we need to click off it, click back on it and then slide it again and we can go further. And I just think that's ridiculous. It's a dreadful design decision. But that's the way it is. So basically you want to use the slider, position it, position the object wherever you want it to be. And you can see that that's about right. You just want it to be wherever you want a block to be inside that object, essentially. Now we need to tell it whether it's a enforcer or a blocker. And make sure you click the, the object, in this case, the little cube. And underneath, you can see we've got part settings, type. And we want to click this drop down and choose support blocker. And you can see that it sort of turns a little bit red. And that's all you want to do. Just make sure it's in position and click OK. And now when we go back to the 3D tab, you can see the little cube there. But when we slice, it disappears, so don't worry about it. So now what we want to do is slice again. So if we click Slice, come back to the Preview tab, you can see now that it's blocked supports inside of that, that hole. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. So hopefully that kind of shows you that approach. And I'm going to just do another little example so that it kind of sinks in, right? So if we double click the model again in our 3D tab, bring the window back up. So as you saw there, we've got supports generated all the way underneath the arm. And you probably don't need that, it's a waste of plastic. So what I'm going to do is load in another object. So we're going to load generic, create another box, but this time I'm going to give it dimensions of say a thousand by a hundred by a hundred and that creates that kind of arm shape and that's actually going to be too big sorry so we're going to delete that object load in another object and we're going to do 200 by 200 by 200 and now what we can see is we've got another cube but it's a little bit bigger right so that's in actually a pretty good position so I'm going to leave it there we want to click the object and under part settings again we want to select support blocker if you want to move it as I said you can use the sliders to do that but I'm just going to leave it there it's fine and that's all you need to do I'm going to click OK now if we re-slice again and we go back to the preview tab that gives a really good demonstration of what it does right so it's generated support again everywhere except the places that we've told it not to which was this area where the filament goes through and the center of this arm so that's approach one what I'm going to do now is show you approach two so if we go back to the 3d tab and we double click our model again I'm going to delete these objects because we no longer want them and Again, as you can see in the top right, we've got support selected to generate everywhere. But what we're going to have to do is so that we don't generate them everywhere, in print settings in the top left, under support material, you can see auto generated supports here. You want to untick that and come back to the plate there. So now, even though we've got supports selected to generate everywhere, if we slice and go to the preview tab, you can see that it didn't generate any at all, even though it's selected to generate them everywhere. And that's exactly what we want. So now we go back to the 3D tab, double click our model so that we bring up that nice window. And this time we're going to tell it where we want the support to be enforced. So we're going to create an enforce enforcer, right? So load generic again, we're going to create the object. And this time I want that really long object. So I'm going to generate that. Again, we're going to have to move it with the sliders. So I'm going to move it along the X axis. 
and move it back slightly on the Y so that we're now over the area that we want it to be. It doesn't matter that the object's overhanging, but it's probably a bit neater if you keep it sort of in the right shape. It might things make things a bit easier when you're trying to enforce and block at the same time. So we need to click the object, but this time under the type, we're going to select a support enforcer because we want to enforce supports inside that object. So we're going to click that and you can see it turns green. Now what we want to do is click OK and hit slice again. Go to the preview tab and you can now see that we have generated supports. We've enforced supports inside that object that we decided. So just to show you again, I'm going to move it this time. So if I move it back a little bit, I move it along the x-axis. Because you probably wouldn't need support all the way underneath, as I said. But if we re-slice, hit preview, you can see exactly what it's doing, right? So it's, it's generating support inside the object. And that's basically all there is to it. I mean, obviously these are really simple models, but the same principle applies no matter what you're trying to print. You know, when you're trying to print those kind of figures and things, it can get a little more complex, but generally it's, it's it follows the same process. As long as you understand the two sort of approaches you can take, you can decide which one you need and just start working from there. Um, as I said, the process is really sort of not intuitive at all. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. So before you go, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all of you that subscribe and watch my videos. It means a lot. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more videos. And please leave a thumbs up on this video if you found it useful. If you want to support me in other ways, there's a link in the description below where you can do that. But it's up to you. If you want to see more of my videos, click one of these. And I hope you have an awesome day.